Well, I decided to keep it. Let's get started. What's up guys? This is the Dell PowerConnect 5448 that I showed you in another video. And uh, I had uh, a question that was whether I should keep it or sell it. Uh, if you remember, I paid about $40 for this. And uh, the going rate, at least when I was looking at it um, initially, was you know, anywhere from a couple hundred up to $350 uh, to sell one of these used, uh, either on eBay or a handful of other places. And I was really thinking about selling it. Uh, posed the question to you guys, and uh, you guys were overwhelmingly uh, saying that I should keep it. Um, I actually had a uh, another discussion with a good friend of mine uh, who knows a lot about this kind of uh, networking stuff, and he... Um, you know, he also said, you know, maybe you should keep it just because it's, uh, you know, for 40 bucks you can't go wrong and it's something that I know I will use. So, you know, based on that and also based on, you know, your guys' response, I've decided to do so. Uh, but one of my concerns, though, was how loud this thing was. So I ended up uh, buying these little tiny um, uh, replacement fans. Uh, these are Scythe Mini Kaze Ultra fans. They're 40 mil fans. Um, and uh, let's see, I can... Little, little small thing here. Uh, they came with a two to three pin adapter, which is good because I don't know what kind of uh, power plug is in here, and uh, some screws. And I bought three of them because there's three fans. Uh, so in this video, I'm actually going to take this apart and replace the fans, and hopefully that'll make it a lot quieter. So I've already gone ahead and removed the um, little side brackets here, uh, the the rack ears that go on the side and then there are seven screws in total to remove around the case so three over here one back here and then another three uh, on that side as you get a nice view of my arm and um, so one two three and then this of course is where the uh, rack ear goes and then there's one tiny screw here uh, and then this whole thing should just lift out and it does so nice metal case and then that's kind of what the inside looks like these right here are all of your uh, ports so if I go like that big giant aluminum heat sink couple of heat sinks here you know power supply and other assorted electronics and of course what we care about are these little fans here uh, these guys are held in with screws of their own which I'll take out and just for a sanity check uh, these are the right size. Um, what I did was is I grabbed the part number off of here, just did a search on Amazon for that, and uh, they pointed me here. And these are actually, um, I grabbed the model that was the same size, but not as um, not as loud, uh, or at least on paper, not as loud. So we'll see how that goes. Now I'm not overly uh, concerned about. Um, but these guys not providing enough air because uh, it's not going to push as much air as these guys but um, because in my rack these guys you know it's not a full uh, like traditional rack like you would find in the data center so there's not going to be a ton of heat uh, it's down here in my basement and I'm only going to be using you know eight or nine ports on this thing so I don't expect it to get too hot um, it's a managed switch so I think the uh, interface that Dell provides for this, I think it actually might have some temperature readings and some other info, or at least I'm hoping that it does. Uh, and then I'll be able to monitor temps that way, but I'm really not that concerned about it uh, being too hot. And if it does um, you know, indicate that it is too hot, then I, can, I guess I can just put the other ones back and just live with it. Here's a close-up of the fans. I wanted to show you a couple things. Uh, first, they're all three-pin connectors. So it's good that the replacement ones came with um, converters. And this last fan here, its cable is actually run underneath the uh, little power circuit here. So I'm actually going to have to take this screw out so I can route the cable out from underneath it. Uh, but other than that, it should be a relatively easy thing to do. Here's a close-up of the fans. And we want to make sure that when we install them that they're positioned correctly. And um, this arrow right here, it's kind of faint, um, a little hard to see, but there's an arrow here pointing that way. And that tells you what direction the air is flowing. This arrow right here tells you the direction that the fan blades are spinning. And we want to make sure that these line up 
uh, the same way. This is the new fan and this is the one that came out of the, the switch. And if I turn them over, um, the labels are on the outside which is good. Um, it's probably another good way to tell. And that's what the underside looks like. You can kind of see the, uh, the difference there. Well, we're plugged in. There's no fans that are on. And on the front, we have a fault light on the fan. So it's kind of what I suspected. And that um, you really do need that third line here to tell the uh, switch that fans are installed. So it's obviously not going to power up because it doesn't think there's any cooling. So I'm going to have to think about what to do. Uh, if I can't sort of come up with a way to fix it now, I'm just going to have to return these fans and order some new ones and then put this on hold. Alright, it's been a couple of days and I did go and get replacement fans uh, that actually have this, the right um, number of wires. Uh, this is uh, these Noise Blocker Black Silent Pro uh, fans. They're the um, same size, 40 by 40 by 20. Uh, and they actually have some, you know, a lot of extra stuff that I probably don't care about. So there's uh, an extension cable and uh, another extension cable and they're braided which is nice um, this little rubber piece for uh, mounting I guess if you're going to put it in a case uh, some screws and uh, hopefully the fan is in here yeah there we go so sticker which I'm not going to be using and then the actual fan and you can see the um, connector here is um, short and then you have a couple of different lengths cables to figure out how you want to do it and that actually is um, a good thing because uh, you know I don't have a lot of space in the uh, the switch so the less cable that I have to worry about routing the better at the place where I picked up these fans they actually were really nice and they gave me one of these little uh, tools here and what this lets you do is um, mess around with the uh, these little wire ends here so that you can actually uh, stick that in there and and pull the cap off so you can rearrange the wires and that's important uh, because I'll show you why in uh, in just a second here here's a close-up of the two connectors for the fans the one on the left here is the uh, fan that came out of the switch and this one on the right the one with the black header there is the one that I bought and you'll notice that the uh, wires here are black rather than white and the black wire is your ground, red is power, and the white one happens to be the uh, RPM sensor. And on the left hand side here, on the white connector, you've got um, power, the blue wire there is your RPM, and then the ground um, over here on the right hand side. And you notice that they're not in the same order. Uh, this is your standard way, so all your fans that come out of the box will look like this, and then this is what's in the switch. I suspect that they do it this way, so that if these fans go bad, you have to order them right from, from Dell or whoever, and they probably cost a lot of money to be wired that way, or at least they charge you a lot of money. Uh, probably cost next to nothing to wire them how they want. But um, So what I need to do is use that little tool and uh, take the header off of this guy and then rearrange the wires so that uh, the fans will work in the switch. Now I, I figured this out kind of the hard way uh, when I was using those uh, Scythe fans from before. Uh, I took a look at them and realized that the wires were wrong, rearranged them. Uh, the fans worked fine, uh, but I was still getting an error on the switch because I didn't have that RPM line. So uh, either way I needed to get new fans anyways, but um, I'm going to have to do a little work on these before I can get them in. Here's the um, connector for the old uh, fan out of the switch, but I wanted to show you how this works. So this guy uh, goes in here, you push this down and over, and then that will release the little catch that's on the wire. So on the one that I actually took apart, you can kind of see what the tops look like. So you know, you use this to um, push down and then the uh, cap comes right off. Now it's good to use the right tool for the job uh, because trying to uh, mash a little screwdriver or something in there uh, might bend these and I'm not uh, looking to have to buy new ones and that's not something that uh, that I can probably fix easily so always use the right tool for the job here. Well it's another couple of days and um, 
uh, I feel kind of dumb for a couple of reasons. Number one is I didn't uh, film what I'm going to tell you happened <laughs> just a couple of days ago. Um, the noise blocker fans that I had actually turned out to be no good. Uh, of the three fans, one was a working fan and the other two did not work. Actually, one um, powered up and would spin, but it did not register the RPM. Uh, so the RPM wire didn't send over a signal and then the other one just didn't work at all so of the three fans two were bad and one were good and um, of course I didn't want to uh, <laughs> keep them so I replaced them and instead of getting direct replacements for those noise blocker fans I picked up these um, little Sunon or Sunon fans which I can show you there these were uh, a little less pricey and you can tell that they are uh, not as feature rich they're just um, some bare wire and a plug they didn't even come in a box um, but that's okay um, I'd rather have a uh, working fan with no parts than a good looking fan that doesn't work alright I've got the fans in and they are pointing in the right direction so that uh, air flow is coming out of the case so going that way and they're plugged in uh, after I rewired them of course I want to make sure that that was um, correct and uh, I just want to plug them in to show you kind of how loud or really not loud they are um, in the last video that I had about this when I powered this thing up it was pretty loud and you could hear it um, I will plug this in and yeah, I don't know if you can hear any of that I mean it is they're not whisper quiet uh, but they do have a little sound um, and you could probably hear my furnace in the background um, compared to this uh, let me take the camera down and I'll actually put them right up front to see if you can uh, hear what that sounds like alright I'm right up against the fans here and I don't know if you can hear that that's actually pretty quiet um, they're not super silent like the sky fans were or even the uh, noise that one noise blocker fan that I had plugged in um, but uh, these are pretty good and they'll do the job for what I need and uh, because the uh, switch is going to be in the rack uh, that's going to be just fine all right next step is to put everything back together uh, and then we can call this project done to recap we got about forty dollars into the switch um, uh, and that normally would go for you know a couple hundred dollars or more depending on where you go to get it uh, and you know I changed the fans out because I wanted it to be a little bit more livable here in the basement uh, so it wasn't uh, creating a ton of noise but I think um, I think it's a, a nice trade-off so we're, we'll definitely get the cooling that we need to get uh, even though it is not whisper quiet but that's okay so I will make another video when I get this in the rack uh, I don't know when that's gonna happen uh, because I'll pull out the uh, the old switch uh, and some other equipment too uh, just to make room for it and actually so uh, everything's neat and tidy uh, so that's gonna do for us today uh, definitely like and subscribe that's gonna help me out a ton and uh, follow me on Twitter Google Plus links are in the description and uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, I've, I'm, you know, I always appreciate you guys when uh, when you're commenting, uh, and uh, I really do like the interaction. I know I've said it a ton of times before, but uh, that's the truth. So, anyways, uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. But for um, you know, after a couple of sets of fans, uh, we finally got it done, and I'm I'm actually happy to put this uh, put. Blah, 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 blah.